Oh, my parents were the biggest ones. Oh, that's big. Side. That's, that's tough. They gave me an ultimatum uh, to, qu to quit my stupid dream. So, on my 18th birthday, on my birthday, my dad shook my hand and said, Good luck, son. And I moved out. Hi, I'm Thomas Yap. Hi, I'm Josiah. And this is Real Talk. In Real Talk, we invite special guests to share real life stories while we drive and talk. We get behind the wheels and find out what drives them, their life lessons and inspiration. And my goal is to find golden nuggets of wisdom so it may inspire us to live life to the fullest. This is Real Talk and let's give it 100. Hey guys, so we're in the car here with three-time Olympian on the velodrome, Josiah Ng. Alright, and uh, so the reason I picked this car, Josiah, it's because we had some good memories in this we car, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> when he's on his way, I said, Oh, we're taking the E30? Shoot, I'm wearing my sandals. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me go get my shoes just in case I need to push again. <laughs> well, just, just so you know, this uh, for those who haven't seen my channel, I restored this car over the lockdown period. And uh, throughout the lockdown period, it's my daily. Yeah. And uh, there were times that my car couldn't start. <laughs> and now, I'll ring Josiah and say, hey, I need help. Because <laughs> we're neighbors, yeah. and, you know, and, and during lockdown period, okay, I, I can go downstairs, right? <laughs> and then we push my car five floors down. <laughs> I push, you <laughs> steer. <yes, yes. laughs> Anyways, thanks for agreeing to come on the Wheel Talk. Uh, this is a series where I interview people, we talk about life, we talk about life lessons, and you being a three-time Olympian, I'm sure there's a lot we can learn from you. So. You're three-time Olympian, you're world champion, uh, you've competed at national, um, international level in uh, cycling, uh, the velodrome, right? So for those who don't know what velodrome is, it's, uh, it's a little ring, uh, the best way to describe, right? It's but a wooden go... track, it's yeah. a wooden banked track where all we do is go fast and turn left. And what, what protection do you have? Because you're going like 60 kilometers an hour, right? Uh, the fastest I've ever gone uh, is a little bit over 80 kilometers an oh, hour. Oh man! That's when I hit the deck. <laughs> That's when I crashed and uh, and and punctured my lung uh, in Mexico. Normally, we only hit top speed of like 72, 73, maybe 74, or five. Uh -huh. um, but we were hit 80 because we were at at a high altitude. Oh, so the wind is. Is less so dense. that the air is uh, the air is very thin. All right. So we were going about ten kilometers an hour faster. People weren't used to that. Uh -huh. So things are different at ten k faster on the bike. We the, the reaction times a little different. So there's a whole bunch of crashes that day. Um, and then my, when my race came out, I'm like, oh shoot, guys. Okay, let's keep it safe. And the uh -huh. next thing you knew it, I'm in the hospital. Now what happened? So you you, yeah. you you just you just crashed and then now someone crashed into me. Oh, sounds like you guys are mad, right? You're driving, no, right? You're riding at yeah. 70, 60, 80, yeah. and and you have no thoughts of slowing down. You just go and go and go. Like we don't have brakes. Yeah, there's only one gear, uh -huh. and it's a fixed gear. That means you cannot coast. So you just pedal. So you just pedal. So it's like when you, you ride a tricycle when you're little, yeah. right? It's a fixed fixed so, wheel. So the only way to stop is just like stop pedaling. So you got to commit 100% into... It's into, commit. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, it, the track cycling, which is what they call it, uh -huh. it really helped us to commit. And then did you quit after you, you got in an accident or did you did you continue racing? No, I continued. That's a big thing, right? You know, yeah. getting hospital, almost losing your life and then getting back <laughs> on the bike. So. How how did you do it? Uh, I, I do motivational talks. Yep. I've done for like Facebook, uh, Microsoft. So the number one thing I say is like, if you're passionate, so passion is the, the thing that kept me going because I was truly passionate about my craft, uh -huh. about what I was doing. So if you're you're truly passionate, you know it's it's a lot easier to keep going. It's a lot easier to have a lot of mental fortitude because you love it. Not everyone can make their passion their living. Mm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But if you're passionate about what you do, it makes it a lot easier to keep going, to pick yourself up. Now in that, in the situations where it's really, really tough, you know, that's when you're building your mental fortitude does help. So having a team around you does help. Second half of my career, I had a sports psychologist. Yep. I engaged this guy, Dave Williams, yep. 
who had a master's in, in psychology and he knew and he learned about my sport and he and I asked him if, if he wanted to work with me and uh, I'm lucky that he did and uh, it really made it a lot my second half of my career a lot lot better one thing that I know that that I really recommend uh, in, in a lot of my talks is uh, and, and to my students are to have a mentor mm. mentor is key especially you know you're you're starting out you want to be up here and you're yep. down here yeah you find someone that has done it mm. right so that they can guide you right so uh, I, I heard number one you gotta you gotta reignite your passion when you fail but you gotta get support as well well, sometimes failure is good. It makes you realize you don't really, you're not doing the right thing in life. <laughs> That's when the mentor comes in handy as well. Ah, uh, right. And so then, then able to help you distinguish and learn from failures, yeah. right? So you know, like it's okay to quit sometimes because not everyone gets it right the first time. Yeah. You know, it's. I, I just wanna take this opportunity to talk to some people right here because you, some people will be watching this video and maybe you know somebody who's given up. They've like, they've thrown in the towel and they don't want to try again. At what, what would be your one advice right now to this, this person watching this video? Like this guy who has given up. Reach yeah. out to someone uh, you can trust. Mm -hmm. uh, reach out to someone you, you think has the wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if it's a stranger too, you can, it doesn't hurt to reach out. If you, maybe if you're embarrassed to, reach out to your inner circle, mm -hmm. uh, reach out to someone that doesn't care about, you know, or that didn't care about where you head. So that can give you uh, perspective, mm. different perspective, so that you can, you, you, can, you can think a little bit, bit clearer, you can have a little bit more clarity. Mm. I think a lot of people, when they when they given up, they, they lock in that perspective. Like, it's why I do these videos, because I think, I mean, I think of the times in my life where I was stuck. It's yeah. because I kept a perspective. And then when you have someone else come in and say, well, did you see it from this angle? And suddenly like, whoa, okay. Yeah. You know, it, it then, then things open up. But anyways, I, I do want to ask a question like uh, if, uh, about um, you decide, this is something I've been curious, right? Yeah. And I think probably some of the audience, uh, perhaps they, they're still looking for what to do in life, they're dabbling in stuff, and yeah. what should I do, you know? How would you advise somebody who's like following the flow of life, yeah. but not really enjoying it, you know? Yeah. And, but they want to break out, you know? So what, what made you say, this is what I want to do, you know? And, <laughs> well, it's, I don't know if that there was that moment where I said, okay, this is what I want to do. It's just, yeah. I enjoyed it so much. I really loved it. It was my passion. It was my, I just knew I wanted to take it as far as I could. Oh. So I never really cared about money. career. Well, I cared about my money, but I never cared about career or anything. Yeah. I just knew I wanted to do it. And you know, when I was young, my, my grandma, who's, who's still alive, who, you know, uh, she, I think she's like 96 by now. Wow. She gave me the, the single most important piece of advice that I've lived by. She says, Saya, find your passion and just figure a way how to make a living out of it. So she was a lifelong music teacher. Uh -huh. and that's what she did. You know, she practiced what she preached. And so I thought, okay, bicycle, I love, my, I love racing, I love riding. And uh, to this day, till I'm 42 years old, I just figured out how to make a living out of it. Mm. So, you know, be, be before it was racing and now it's, it's coaching. Yeah. It's being a teacher. We live in this world where I, I, I think right now in Malaysia, right? And, and also a lot of countries that are getting modern. People measure their worth by money most of yeah. the time. Which, well, I, I get it. Money has a place in giving us a good quality life, yeah. giving us... Because you can measure it. Yeah, you can measure it, but... People want to flex. But, but the, the thing yeah. is, it seems that a lot of people figure out like what to do to earn money first before figuring out, uh, before, and then not sticking to their passion. Yeah. Look, because you will be successful if, you find, if you're doing something that's your passion. Yeah. Because you'll be obsessed with it. Yep. So when you're obsessed with it, you put in more work into it. It's just shifting that 
into okay how do i monetize it yes because we all have to cherry maca and we all yes, have yes. to put food on the table <laughs> and a roof over our head oh same like this i'm gonna find a cherry maca with this too all right yeah so yeah. this is this is your passion this is yeah. your true passion yeah. you love making love content cars. yeah you love it you know doing something with cars and yeah. you realize as i see your your journey you realize that making a living or making money out of cars is a lot harder <laughs> so then you can you you kind of mix and match you do a little roja roja and say okay all right so now we can do something for a bigger audience but still involve cars, cars yeah right you're figuring out how to link this the the, the the things that really uh monetize right? uh it's this this is the pathway that's the it this is the fun part the technical part yeah but but if you don't love it if you don't find joy in doing it you'll never see it true right well because it's so hard yeah and, and you and, spend and so much time and then you you think okay you link time to money yeah we so so you guys mostly yeah. not all of you yeah. you link time to money yeah. which is which is a terrible thing yeah. to do <laughs> we don't link time to money so we're will, we're willing to put in the 80 100 200 hours without getting paid yeah to make the breakthrough and then the breakthrough will be huge. Yeah. And that's a little bit like what you used to do. Yeah. With, or what you, you, can, you still you do with, it, yeah. with, with the network marketing. Yeah. It's quite hard to make that big breakthrough. And, but the ones that do are the ones that put in that hundreds of hours getting paid very little or mm -hmm. having to invest even. And then, pow, the big money comes, the big yeah. breakthrough. So when you started cycling, did you get a lot of criticism? And how do you deal with it? Like, well, my parents were the biggest ones. Oh, that's big. Side. That's that's tough. They gave me an ultimatum uh -huh. to quit to quit my stupid dream, <laughs> or or fail not under their roof. Because uh -huh. they they assume I would fail, uh -huh. and say that well we don't want you to be a, a failure under. Because I guess they, they care about you know what their friends think, right? Uh -huh. So. So on my 18th birthday, on my birthday, my dad shook my hand and said, good luck, son, and I moved out. Wow. Did, I, I was technically homeless, so I was caught couch surfing. <laughs> couch surfing. And luckily I had a few good friends that let me stay with them to complete my high school degree, uh -huh. which is important to complete our schooling. Uh -huh. And then after that, it was like six months, then I moved to the beach, to my, my other friend's couch. I actually had a spare room. And I lived with them for like two years, rent free. Wow. You know, the people that help you along your way, don't ever forget them. So I, I paid his way to come see me, watch me at the Olympics, my first wow, Olympic Games. Wow. That was his first time ever traveling outside of the United States. If you reach out, because I was decent, pretty good at that, and I had a black book uh, of, of people to call. All my rivals had parents to help them to get to races. I didn't, because my parents didn't support it. Uh, so I would tumpang. I, you know, I made sure, you know, all of them knew my situation and uh, they're really cool. And I would say, hey, I, I got a gun for, are you going to this race? Are you going to this race this weekend? And uh, until I found a ride. So determined, I was quite determined to uh, live out my passion. You know, if there's anything I'm learning is that, you, you know, when you love something, you gotta you gotta commit all in and take the risk, right? Yeah. Some people don't even, some people think about the risk and that's it. That's the end of it. They think about their dream, they think of the risk, and that's the end of it. Yeah. Right. But you 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 went you went all in. So that's 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 inspiring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I think I think it starts from mindset yeah. because to me, I think it's I, I think they're taking a risk. Yeah. I'm not taking a risk. Because I, if I fail, I don't waste my time because I'm doing my passion. Mm. If they fail, they waste their time because it's, they, they hate what they're doing. So it's like, they, I think it's a bigger risk to go into something you don't love. For example, if you're going and working in the corporate, slaving away 40, 50 hours, or let's just say, let's just say investment banking, you hate it. You're wasting 70, 80 hours a week of your life. Sure, you might get to be, you know, you know, you're compensated for that. Um, but you're wasting. The one thing that we cannot buy, no matter how rich you are, how wealthy you are, is time. Yes. Time is the most valuable asset that we have on this planet. Yeah. So I think that mindset 
is the most important to start with. Mm. If we take anything away from watching this 20 minute video, the mindset, hopefully you, you can. Oh, you, can you, you gave tweet. us so much. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. I got, I think we, we got a lot of uh, talking done. Uh, great interview. But I do want to ask uh, one last thing for, for just for the audience. What's the three things they can do today, right? Right now, yeah. right now, as they're listening, to make the yeah. dreams happen, like yeah. right now. I'd say make a list of potential mentors mm -hmm. that can help you, that can guide you, mm -hmm. and give you perspective. Mm -hmm. Make a list of people you know, people you don't know, mm -hmm. um, and then figure a way how to pitch to them to be your mentor, mm -hmm. right? Take them out to lunch, sushi. Right? Ask them if they like sushi or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever food. Uh, so that that'd be that'd be the no number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is uh, get another piece of paper and set goals. Set your big goal. You know the big, overarching, grand plan. What do you want to do? What What do you want to be? Right? Where do you want to end up? Mm -hmm. Then uh, you know. Uh, the, the medium steps, medium goals, okay, in the next year or two, mm -hmm. where do I want to end up? Mm -hmm. What's the goal? Mm -hmm. And then your, your small goals is, okay, what I want to accomplish this week to get to accomplish that medium term goal so that you can accomplish your big goal. That's the second one. And those two are, those two are, are tied up too. Mm. So, uh, normally goal setting with a mentor is great. Because they, they, they can tweak that yeah. plan, yeah. That, that roadmap. Yeah. Right? Can we, can we put it two? Because that's a lot of things to really? do. Really? Okay. okay. Just, just two, two things. Two things we can do. Yeah. Because uh, how, about, how about making sure that you're on, on, like, making sure you choose the goal that you're passionate about? That's important. That's the most important, right? So, you know, that, that comes with then you have to think, okay, what, 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 do you want, what do you want out of it? Right? Yeah. What, what do you want? So if you're completely lost in life, yeah. Make a list what you enjoy doing. What, what's your passion? What do you love waking up and doing? Mm. And it could be crazy. It could be something that you think is stupid or your parents think is stupid, like waking up and playing video games. Hey, hey. I know people who play video games for a living a lot of and money. make a, yeah, lot a lot of money. money. <laughs> One of my business partner's son uh -huh. went to Barcelona and he cleaned up. I think he made 80K. Ring it, ring it, ring it. Whoa, but 80,000 ring it. The guy is 16 or 17 yeah. years old. Yeah. There, there's a lot of guys like him that's like you never heard of, but they're making 100K, 200K a year. USD. Yeah. Most people in the world can live a really good quality of life making 100 grand a year. But that's where we need to shift the conversation to happiness, yeah. passion, doing what you love. Exactly. Hey, before we, we end, uh, first of all, thanks, Josiah coming on uh, Real Talk. Any, any, look, if you love this, um, yeah, I do a lot of mentoring, I'm getting into that, uh, you know. So, you know, put me on your list if you, if you need. Mm -hmm. Follow me on my IG, you know, a lot of things. It's, 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 it's gonna be a lot about my, my, my two girls and whatnot, but <laughs> I, yeah, I. Oh, you're passionate about, about my them. passionate, right, right. <laughs> Josiah Cyclist, J-O-S-I-A-H, Cyclist, C-Y-C-L-I-S-T. Yeah. Um, you, I, I always reply to everyone that uh, reaches out to me. Yeah, and uh, if you if you're a, a free leader, advice, and, but if a leader in a company yeah. and you need like motivational talk, you need someone to get in and get to your people, and pump your people up. There's the guy. I'm there's your guy. the guy. All right, guy. all right. So so both ways you can you can engage that and yeah. you know I've i it's been a privilege being your friend having this conversation. Oh man, likewise, yeah. man. Yeah. It's, 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 anyways, thank you so much for watching. And uh, Josiah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. If you enjoyed this content, enjoyed Real Talk, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, we'll be getting more of this series. If, let me know if you want more of this series out, Real Talk. And let me know if you want to know more about Josiah. If you want this, just go subscribe to his uh, IG, hang out with him, you know. Let us know in the comments as well, right? And in your life stories, love to hear from you, all right? And don't forget to give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so right now we're just gonna uh, hit them. See, the car didn't break down today. <laughs> Good, because I didn't bring my shoes. <laughs> well, it was restored, yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah. thanks man, just sign All right. All right, cheers. cheers. Right. See thanks you guys in another video. Keep See it 100% love you guys. Yeah. Bye.
Hey guys, so this is Bobby, my boss. So that's my dilemma. So I know I know I wouldn't be be accepted into these kind of jobs. I wouldn't pass the interview. Uh, it's not about an issue of confidence, it's about you draw your own sort analysis. <laughs> <laughs>